out here today, we're going to film a walkthrough of Kaido's highly modified Toyota Hilux, which has been in a few four-wheel drive action trips now, and you will see it getting around the place. Really works for Drifter, so it's quite a well done up rig. So what is it, Kaido? So this is a 2010 N70 Hilux. Uh, it's a 1KD, 3 litre turbo diesel motor and a 5 speed manual. Uh, it's got independent front, leaf rear, solid axle, so yeah. So we'll just do a, we'll run through, we'll do all the mods. He has, I'm quite interested to know, because I don't even know what he's done with this car. He's done so much, so we'll run front to back. We'll go through all the different modifications he's done. Starting at the front here, so what's the bull bar at the front? So this is just an Xbox bull bar. Yeah. Um, and I've added triple hoops, as you can see on the side here. Uh, just a little bit more protection, brace it up a little bit more. Um, in the front, we've got a Runbar 11 XP uh, winch. Uh, Factor 55 Fairlead on the front and a Factor 55 winch uh, hook dinghy. That's synthetic rope in there? Ah uh, yeah, synthetic rope, yeah. yep. This x rox bar looks a lot better when you've added the hoops yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, oh, I really like it, yeah. Bit more um, protection. Then we've just got a GME uh, whip attached to the uh, XRS, so... How many DBI is that? Um, no idea. No idea. 3.3 <laughs> or something 3.3, like. yeah. yeah. I think it's the touring pack or something that yeah, they do okay. for the XRS, so... Yeah. yeah, good range, I'm pretty happy with it. Bash plates? Uh, yeah, so I got no bash plates underneath the front. I don't you have any there? Nah, because uh, I don't really hit too much on there. Uh, I'm trying to put the wheels on the rocks, but it's just got the standard X Rocks uh, radiator guard, which is pretty good enough for me. I mean, you can drag a different fair bit of stuff and not have too many issues, but try and be a bit careful on it. Uh, but yeah. You don't have any, they're made of factory recovery points? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're just factory ones, yeah. Yeah, but you'd normally be winching at the front anyway. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. usually um, I usually opt to winch rather than snatching, it's a bit easier on the vehicle. Yeah. Um, but if I ever do pull off those points, just put a bridle on it to, to spread the load. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the front of yours is a lot different to the front of mine. Like the front of mine without bash plates looks horrible. Yeah. Like you just bash the pieces, but yours yeah. looks quite strong. Yeah. It does have a diff drop, so the diff, or well, the reason it doesn't have the bash plates is because it diff, it's got a diff drop, so the diff sits a little bit lower, which is was uh, intruding on the, the bash plate. Yeah. Uh, I just haven't had time to sort something out for it, but it hasn't had any issues so far. And down the side of the vehicle for rock sliders on the side, what, what brand are these? What do you got? So Mechfab Industries made these. Um, I really like them because they stick out a bit, so they're a nice step, but they look a bit more sleek uh, rather than like your checker plate top style uh, side step. Um, and yeah, good protection, they're really solid, so I like them. Then on the side of the vehicle, obviously stainless snorkel. Yeah, so it's a four inch Fabulous Fabrications uh, long entry snorkel, uh, just plumbed up to the factory airbox. Any reason you went stainless? Looks? Um, looks mostly, yeah. yeah. There's a few debates on, on if uh, a forward facing is better or whatever, I just like the look of them, so. Um, you haven't had any problems with water down yours? Nah, nah. Oh. The, the factory airbox has got a little drain in the bottom. Yeah. So I have tested it, like driving heavy rain, I get out and just have a quick look straight away. And yeah. you see a little bit of water in the bottom, but my airbox drains really well. I've had water in there before on purpose and just watch it drain out and it, it works pretty well. So yeah. I haven't had any issues. Um, the air cleaner is never wet when it's raining. So, yeah. uh, but maybe on other models uh, with different airboxes that could possibly be an issue, but it hasn't been for me. And noisy? Ah, uh, yeah. Right in your ear, hey. Yeah, I don't mind noisy. Yeah. Same with mine, because it's like fully right in here there, so if you have the window yeah, down, it's yeah. like blasting. Yeah. But it doesn't annoy me. As but... soon as you put the window up, you can't hear a thing. Though, yeah, so that's the same with me. So if you get to see, we just put the window up. Yep. And then we got some big mirrors uh, here. What yep. are they? So they're the newest mod that I've done to it. Uh, they're clear view tyrant mirrors. Yep. Um, so the main reason for that, I was up in coughs and I actually snapped the factory mirror off. Yeah. Um, so I needed a replacement, and I was looking at these uh, before that even happened, because with the tray and canopy, you obviously got no rear vision mirror, and um, the side vision is a little bit um, protruded by the, the width of the tray. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't actually see what was directly behind me. It was a massive pain in the ass for backing up. Uh, but with these, they got like a blind spot mirror on the side, and they're a little bit wider, so you can see right down the back, and obviously they extend, but it's not really a tow vehicle, so it wouldn't really extend them very often, but uh, yeah, they've been So they can come out a bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. they just slide straight out. Um, and I think they look better than the factory too. And then, Big one, which probably the most commonly asked question about any vehicle, is tires and lift. So start with well, tires, rims, lift. What um, tires and wheels you got? So these are CSA Raptor rims. They're a 16 by 8 on a zero offset, which seems to work pretty well for the Hilux in clearing the tire. Um, it's a 285, 75, 16. Uh, Goodyear Wrangler MTR. Never had an issue with these. Really good uh, sidewalls on them, so I'm yeah. pretty happy with these tires. They're a good looking mud tire. Yeah, yeah, and and fairly quiet on the road too. Are um, these 
Um, alloy or steel rims? Uh, alloys. Yeah, yeah, alloys. Yeah, CSAs. Yeah. Um, and then for suspension, we've got a three inch Bilstein strut in the front. Uh, so yeah, and then it's got SPC uh, upper control arms, uh, just to get a better wheel alignment. So you've got adjustment top and bottom now. Yeah. Um, and then it's got a fat bars uh, diff drop, just to keep the CV angles nice. So is that diff drop, how many, how far does that bring it back down? As much as you can go. It's the biggest diff drop you can get, I'm fairly sure. Okay. So you can get the style where it's just like a puck, yeah. and it sort of spaces down a little bit, whereas this is a full arm replacement. Yeah. Um, they're not cheap, but definitely worth it if you're going more than a two inch lift, yeah. I would say. Okay. What about chopping the guard? Did you have to chop the guard in order to fit these tires? Yeah, yeah. So there's a fair <laughs> bit of work in that. So it's got a body mount chop. Uh, so it's been cut back and um, a plate welded in place. Uh, it looks fairly factory, so that yeah. just gives you a bit more clearance on the body mount. It only just scrubs the chassis the tiniest bit, uh, full compression. And we'll do it separately down the back because being a ute, we have leaf springs down at the rear compared to coils up the front. So what have you had to do suspension wise at the rear of this? So pretty much it's got uh, fat bars, 190 mil extended shackles. Yep. Uh, it's got a two inch lifted Lovells uh, leaf pack out of an RG Colorado. Um, so yeah, they're two inch lifted and they're 210 kilo constant load uh, springs. And then it's got a 10 inch travel 80 series shock. So the reason why I've gone for an RG Colorado pack is it's a pretty well researched mod for the N70 Hiluxes. So basically the front eye of the leaf spring to the center bolt is the same distance on the RG and the Hilux, but then yeah. the center bolt to the rear eye is a little bit longer in the Colorado. Um, so basically you can, they can bolt straight in, um, the center bolt's the exact same, so it's not gonna push a diff forward or back. And then you, put, uh, you combine that with the extended shackle and it gives you a really nice uh, shackle angle. So basically, when your, drift do uh, your diff drops down, your shackle straightens out, and then because uh, of the length of the leaf, you can get a lot more curve in it. Yeah. Um, so this, compared to the old setup, it, it flexes and droops way better. Works works yeah. a lot better. Yeah, it's a really, really well-researched mod. A lot of people have done it in the Hilux, and yeah. it, it works really well. So, and you've got a full-size spare under the back there, too. Yeah, yeah it just fits. It's just a, fits. a full size, it's right close full size 285 on a zero offset rim. Uh, it used to hit on the exhaust um, on the side there. It used to hit really bad actually. It was burnt up a bit of a, a gash in it. So <laughs> I put that out the side, but uh, you wouldn't fit anything bigger than that. It's really like at full compression, it's super close to the diff, but you yeah. definitely can fit a 285 under yeah. there. Yeah. So is that why you have the exhaust out the side of yours? That and uh, I was up a Keely Loop one time and I was reversing down and it caught on a rock and folded the whole thing in half and stalled the car. Okay. So it took me ages trying to stuff around get it, getting it back out. Yeah. And then um, I had the, the whole tail end of the pipe was pretty much buggered, but the, the part that goes over the diff was still sweet. Yeah. So I made a new exhaust out of that that comes out the side. You'll see that in a second. Yeah, okay. Well, we might yeah. take a look at the exhaust now. All right. And then on the side, a bit something a bit different. We've got an exhaust out the side here. Yeah. Which we were just talking about at the back why you did that. Um, yeah. But what is your exhaust? So basically, it was a three inch PPD and it was the first mod that I did in the car. So, uh, yeah, it's three inch from the turbo back. Uh, it's got a cat and a resonator in it yeah. and basically I was up yeah, Killingworth loop and uh, it got caught in a rock as I was backing down, folded it in half and basically the part, so obviously your exhaust comes down here, your chassis rail is up here so the exhaust wraps up around the chassis rail and then comes out the side here. Yeah. So the part that wraps up around was the section that used to be the, the hoop that goes over the diff. Yeah. So basically I've taken that section that was over the diff, turned it 90 degrees, um, put that out the side and then um, made a little... Um, a little curve section to, to link that up and now it comes out the side so yes yeah, um, not many people would like it because it is droney um, on, on the road because yeah. it's so close to the, to the cab um, the same as like with a diff dump it sort of vibrates underneath the car and makes it really droney but oh, I don't mind I drive with the windows down all the time usually um, so it doesn't really drone inside the cab. Do people um, like it? Or? Well, it was, it was supposed to be a joke to start with. Because <laughs> I, I kind of remember it. saying yeah. that, like you kind of yeah. saying it was a joke. Well, I it? folded the exhaust, I'm like, uh, like I had all this old exhaust that was all folded in half and like all crumpled and just crap. So I was like, yeah. oh, I'll just muck around with it one Arvo. And I made it and then uh, I just haven't had time to fix it up. So I'll eventually probably put just like a, a straight system through and just keep it as... Um, I don't know, something I can chuck on if I want to, but yeah, I know, sure. it's still in the job for the moment, it's pretty cool. So. Alright, then the big, obvious, uh, very nice looking one down the back is your big tray and canopy setup. Yep. So, what's the tray? So, the whole thing is a mid alloy setup. Yep. Uh, so, we've got an 1800 uh, aluminium tray. Um, 1800 length? Yep. yep. And I think it's 1850 wide. Yeah. Um, and then canopy is a one meter by obviously 1850 yeah um, all mid alloy and then we've got the I think these are the thousand under tray tapered toolboxes uh, flared mud guards uh, so yeah the whole lots uh, mid alloy so aluminium is that being a bit lighter 
Oh uh, yeah. Lighter. 100%. Yeah, so without the canopy on it, just the tray alone, it was the same way as a tub. Oh, like yeah. very close to it. Yeah. Um, and basically with aluminium, I mean, it's not as strong as steel, but if you build it right and the design is right, it can be as strong as steel. So uh, yeah. it's really well braced underneath. And the other good thing about it, it's got an extrusion system all the way through it. So just say you were to bust one of these boxes, it's literally just four nuts and bolts, it undoes, and then you can pull it straight out. Same with the guards. And um, it all just clips in to like an extrusion system built under the tray. So, and if you wanted to add like a water tank or a trundle or something, it all just goes to the extrusion system underneath. So that's really handy. So what do you, you got a toolbox on each side? Yep, so uh, the other side toolbox is just storage. Um, I usually put recovery gear in there just because it's easy to get to. Yep. Um, but I haven't mounted anything permanent in there. Yep. This side, I've got the ARB dual compressor. Yep. Um, and then I've got, just got this hose in there all the time ready to go. So if I want to air up, just pull that straight out and you're good to go. Um, the switch for that's in the cab because it also runs the air locker. Yep. Um, and that's running off the second battery too. So I can pull up, have the car completely off and just run it straight from the lithium in the back. Um, and not have to worry about running the engine while I'm pumping it. Okay, so this all runs through your dual battery system. Yeah, yeah. So the wiring goes up because um, all my batteries are in the in behind the cab, uh, in behind the rear seat. Yeah. Wiring runs up under the tray into the back. Uh, so yeah, you can pump up. Don't have to have the car on, which is really handy. That makes it easy. It's a pain in the ass, like running the car. All yeah, the time yeah. Air and up. if you want to air up a few mates as well, you have your car running there for half an hour. Or so so it yeah. gets a bit of a pain. The dual compressor is really good. So I find that. I don't actually use like a tire pressure gauge to measure it because I usually go to like 18 or 15 in the tires yeah. and then I time one minute and it just pumps up to 33 straight away back to about 35 to 40. So in one minute it does that? Yep, one minute yeah, per okay. tire from 18 to 35. So that's, that's, really, that's good. really good. And it's got a fan on the top too, so it keeps nice and cool. Because um, I've yeah. just got a cheapy one. It's yeah. like a Ridge Rider one or something, but yeah. to do the same thing you're talking about would be double that time. Yeah. It'd be about yeah. two minutes. Yeah, it's super quick. I really like yeah. it. Yeah. And then, so you got a half, Canopy setup. Yep. So basically, mid alloy one again. This is mid alloy. It's yep. a one meter uh, canopy. Yep. Basically, I've gone for the one meter to keep the weight down. Um, so as you can see here, the center line of the canopy is straight over the rear axle, which is where you want the weight. Yeah. Um, and if you if you set yourself up with a smaller box, giving yourself less room, you sort of force yourself to make a lighter setup, uh, which is obviously better for you in the long run when you're off road yep. and uh, and touring. It's a lot better to have a light setup. And obviously, you've got the tray space in the back, so I'll eventually get tray sides made for it. So you firewood and and all your, your yeah uh, yeah it's kind of hard man it's just a bit like blank at the moment yeah but yeah but sides to be like, good chuck yeah. a swag or whatever yeah i just strap a swag or something on there if i need to yeah um but i will get tray size made for it so you can use the space for for other things so yeah so i'll have a look at yeah. basically you've got a drifter draw set that i made myself it's the first draw set i've ever made yeah. Um, so, so that's it's a, pretty good. Yeah, well, obviously all wood and stuff. Yeah, so wood. it's just rib nutted to the base of the canopy. Yeah. Um, it's spaced up a bit so the drawers obviously clear the lip of the uh, canopy. Yeah. So we've just got a kitchen drawer there, a bit of food and cooking gear yeah. uh, in that one. Yeah. And then basically the idea behind the fridge drawer is I didn't want to put a big uh, slide in there with obviously a fridge on top of that because you start building up a weight and then your fridge side's obviously going to be a lot wider um, than what this setup is. So the fridge drawer is a 30 litre uh, litre angle. Yeah. Just um, a so slide out fridge. Slide that out there and there's your fridge space. So yeah. for me, for a weekend with maybe like two people, it's ideal. Um, but if I wanted to do like an extended trip, maybe like a week or two week trip, I'd put another angle in the other side or in the back seat. Yeah. Um, but just for like a weekend or like a week away of just two people, I find that it's, it's enough. Other things, we've got a drifter LED light pole in the top there. Oh, yeah. uh, that's just on the dinner switch. Yeah. So that lights up real well on there. And also you can unclip that because just clipped onto that, that mid's pole there. So you can unclip that and uh, it's got an extension lead on it so you can take it wherever you want in camp, which is pretty handy. Yeah. Um, just a fuse block in the back here that powers anything in the canopy. Uh, cigarette plug, a few USBs, got over on both sides. But I've kept it fairly basic for the moment. Uh, I'll probably add a, an inverter into here later on, but yeah. And then over the thing. other side is just like a bit of a storage room, really. Yeah, so it's bare space on the other side. I actually just got a dog the other day. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking of turning that side into a dog box and yeah. just putting a divider up the middle. Yeah. Uh, and also I've insulated the whole canopy. So it's got plywood with sticky back insulation uh, throughout the whole thing, which keeps the noise down a lot. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> it um, <laughs> keeps the heat down a lot. And like yeah. by, by the noise, like if you, if you tap on here yeah. before and after, it makes a big difference. So it, yeah. it, yeah, I can tell it's doing something. Yeah, yeah. and it keeps it mainly keeps the heat down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So from the canopy, we're just talking about the fridge and the lights, which yep. run, and your air compressor, which all run off your dual battery system. Yep. Which you have behind the back seat, which yep. just folds forward. Yep. 
So what's the what battery you got there? So pretty much it's a Safiri 125 amp hour lithium. Yeah. Um, so the reason I've got it behind the seat is I wanted to keep all the 12 volt gear out of the canopy, which yeah. is where you usually put it, or under the engine bay, which I don't have much room under there at the moment. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to keep it out of the canopy so that it's only one plug to sort of take the canopy off. So if I undo that Anderson plug, yeah, okay. canopy comes straight off. There's no more wires in it, yeah. uh, which I do a fair bit just to keep the, the setup light if I'm going to do a bit of beach stuff or a bit of hard forward driving. Yeah. So it keeps all the 12 volt in the cab, which is really handy. Um, so yeah, obviously the compressor's hooked up to that. Um, we got this little uh, Simarine monitor in here that um, yep. measures all your, your inputs and outputs. Yep. Uh, I had to do a fair bit of modifying to fit the battery in there. Yep. Uh, obviously, because it's a full size uh, a battery, I've had to cut the seat foam a little bit. I had to dodge this up with zip ties, but yep. it works pretty well and it fits behind there nice and neat. Yep. Um, and to charge it, I've got a Red Arc BCDC uh, 40 amp charger um, and then yeah, just a fuse block underneath. So all that's stored underneath the seat. So you usually have the hatches with your, your jack and like your tool kit and that. So yeah. underneath the, the seat hatches, I put the BCDC uh, and also the fuse block. Uh, and then I've got another fuse block in the canopy that runs any, everything in the canopy like the fridge. There's plenty of room in behind here. Yeah. I've, I've dedicated all this to 12 volts. So as you can see here, there's, there's heaps of space to add other stuff there. So Yeah, there's still plenty of room yeah. there. Yeah. You've got to put an inverter and, like and all that stuff in there too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you don't have solar at the moment? Not at the moment, because I haven't really had somewhere permanent to mount it. Yeah. Um, I'll probably go either a dedicated solar on top of the, the rooftop tent when I get the new 1.2 wide one in, yep. um, or maybe one on top of the, the uh, canopy. But if I don't have the tent, I really don't need the solar power because I'm not going to be doing extended camps without the tent. Um, and you, I get heaps of power off, off the uh, the engine bay anyway. Uh, the few overnight camps I've done in it, uh, running the fridge and lights and that all night, I usually wake up and it's at 90, 90% and yeah. it's charged within half an hour of idling. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I really don't need solar at the moment, but I probably will do it on the, on the rooftop tent in the near future. Now, in, we'll continue with what's inside the car. So in the front here, it looks like you got a few different bits and pieces. Um, yep. I don't know, where do you want to start? What's, what have um, you done in the front in the cab? I'll probably start in the middle. So we've just got a single DIN um, head unit sort of radio thing. Uh, yep. Just like no CD in it, just Bluetooth. Because I found that the, the factory um, double DIN just used to stuff up all the time. So I replaced with that. I got the scan gauge in the middle, just in the little pocket. Um, I probably say that's like the best one in the whole car, honestly, because it just allows you to see what's going on with yep. the car. You're not guessing if, if it's overheating or you can see what your battery's charging at yep. uh, and all those. So I really like that. Right in the middle where you can see it. It's also yep. just, it's got an adjusted speedo in it because obviously the 33 is going to roll quicker. Yeah, okay. So yep. that's where the, the, um, the speedo's been trued up on that so I can actually see what speed I'm doing. Yeah. Um, in the middle, I just got the, the GME uh, XRS plugged in. Yep. Um, so you can unplug that obviously if I'm not using it, put it in the center console so it's out of the way. Um, in the middle I've got the compressor and the rear locker switch from ARB. Um, so that's a, doesn't come factory of a rear locker, you've put a rear locker in. Yeah, yeah, yep. no locker. And honestly that should have been the first one I did. Yep. Uh, it only, I only put it in like maybe three or four months ago. Yeah. And uh, I wheeled it a lot with a three inch lift and the 33s, all the flex in the rear, yep. all the work I'd done. And honestly I was getting smashed by BT50s with a factory locker and standard yep. tires. Yeah. So honestly, if, if I was building this car again, it would be 100% from, from where I bought it, straight to ARB, get a locker in, yeah. uh, because it makes the biggest difference off-road, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, then I've just got a few extra accessory uh, sockets there that are rigged up to the second battery, so you can charge your phone in here with the car off. Uh, on this side, we've got the iDrive. Um, I usually run it on U4 on the road, and E4 uh, when off-roading. Uh, it doesn't give you more power, um, the only thing I use it for is just turning throttle uh, control down so you can sort of get a more more pedal feel when you're, you're doing rough stuff. So that's basically when you put your foot up, foot down, it, it changes like uh, how well, how much like you have to put it down for how much yeah, sort of yeah, power exactly you get. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I use it on E4 because that's economy four. Yeah. Um, and it's really doughy, so when, you, when you're rock crawling and stuff, you've got to put really push on the pedal to get any response out of it. And because I've done a, a fair bit to the engine bay, so it, the boost comes on really quick. Yeah. Um, so yeah, being able to turn the throttle response down is really handy, I find. Yeah. Um, and then up the top here, I've made my own custom uh, gauge holder, just out of some 1.5 mil uh, sheet aluminium. And then we've got a boost and EGT gauge. And they're right there on the front of the dash where you can see them. So I just, I monitor those religiously while I'm driving. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're a, a pro comp uh, ultralight by um, Automator. Yeah, Automator. Yeah, the yeah. Automator Pro Comp Ultralights. Really okay, like cool. them. Nice backlighting them so you can see them at night. And what's that about everything in here? Um, that pretty much, oh, and the whole the whole cabs, um, well the floor, the firewall and the rear wall is all dynamated, uh, which yeah. made a huge difference to road noise. 
Um, I really like that. And uh, yeah, so the whole floor has been ripped out, dynamite, the whole thing. So sound dead and the whole thing. So yeah. It's much quieter once you did that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've got to do the doors and the roof uh, yet still. Yeah. Um, but just doing the floor and the, and the firewall was the biggest one. Just stops all that, that annoying engine noise coming through. Uh, through the front, so I did all the way as far as I could up the firewall from the inside, yeah. and yeah, that made a huge difference. That's yeah. pretty much it in the cab. Now, up on the roof, mount on your roof racks there, you got one of your, the new Drifter rooftop tents. Yep, so this is a 1.4 wide uh, Wildlands tent. It's the only one in the country at the moment. Yeah. Um, we've got also got a 1.2 wide, but this is a 1.4 for comparison. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's mounted on some Rhino rack uh, bars, just like some flat bars, they unclip really easy. So if you've got the tent off, it's really easy to take them off. But yeah. sit straight on top, uh, just some little clamps underneath with some wing nuts. And yeah, super easy to get, get on there and off. Can you mount this, like, do you need a rack to mount it onto? You can't just mount it on the roof? No, nah, you'd need some sort of rack system. This is a, the lightest and cheapest option yeah. uh, of a rack system. Yeah. Uh, you can do it on a flat rack, like your, your Rhino Pioneer platform or yeah. like your ARB style with the, the mesh. Yeah. So uh, you can need... mount on that, but this is the easiest option. Yeah. To mount. So if you've if you got something there already, you'll be able to get it up there. But yeah. if you just yeah. got nothing, you'll need yeah. to get a couple of bars. If planning. you're intending on leaving it on there all the time, this is probably the better option because those roof bars, obviously there's nothing in between them. So if you want to stack like swags and stuff like that, it's going to be easy with a, uh, a flat rack. Yeah. Um, but if you plan on, yeah, if you plan on taking it on and off a fair bit, then a flat mark rack might be the go because when it's off, you can use that other stuff as well. Uh, open up. Let's have a up. have a look at. I'm keen to check it out. So just four latches. Yeah. So with this current setup, I don't actually have the ladder in it because um, I can use the tray to get up into it. Yeah. Um, which obviously saves a little bit of weight there. The whole car is really, really weight conscious, so that's something I thought about. Yeah. Um, so I've left the ladder out of this one, and I can just walk up from the back. So no, I mean, it's just got a clip on ladder to climb up it. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. just hooks onto the extrusion on the outside. So, so yeah, four latches. Opened up right on like gas struts. Yep. Yeah. Um, so then you got this fold over section here. Bring that across. Um, these side sections. So if you had something like a wagon uh, or the same setup that I've got, then you can just yeah, enter from the back. That saves having to climb up a ladder, which some people don't like. The last bit, just uh, tighten up this spreader bar on the top. Yeah. Tensions up your roof. There you go. All set up. How thick's the mattress? Uh, so it's a 50 mil. Um, thicker than that. Yeah, it's it's similar to a swag mattress. So if you're used yeah. to sleeping on a swag, it's it's pretty good. But yeah, yeah, with this build, I never intended on putting a rooftop tent on the top, but it's a fairly light and slim lime setup, so um, it beats the swag. I'd say that. Yeah, it'd be um, quicker to set up and pack down than swag as well. Yeah, yep, it yep. makes it a bit easier. Yeah, uh, for sure than having a swag. And do you feel much difference on the tracks with this weight up on the roof? Um, with any weight changes on this car, it makes a big difference because of the suspension setup. Yeah. It's fairly soft and no sway bars, so uh, I definitely do notice it, yeah, but it's it's not a huge issue. I did all of coughs with this on the roof, and we're doing some really steep stuff up there, similar yeah. to what you, some of the same tracks that you did up there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I did it with this and a fully loaded canopy, and it was it was pretty light good. on its feet, so it yeah. doesn't make a huge difference. Yeah. But you will notice it. And you have, like, it's got uh, <coughs> lights or anything in here? Yeah, yeah, so it's got a little LED strip on the top. Yeah. Uh, just in that white sock, so it sort of spreads the light out. Yeah. Uh, and I can just sort of run off any anything that can um, power a USB. Yep. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty basic. And this, yeah, this is a 1.4, plenty of room up here for two adults. Yeah, yeah. I'll end up running the 1.2 uh, on these once we've got them in at Drifter. Yeah. Um, just to keep the, the profile a little bit smaller. And they're also, the 1.2s will be under 50 kilos, so yeah. a little bit of weight saving there. This one here comes in at 59 yeah. uh, for the 1.4 wide. But if you're touring and stuff, you want the extra room for sure. Um, but for me, the 1.2 is going to work a bit better for my setup. Yeah, for sure. Now, in the engine bays, looks like quite a bit of work you've done in here. It's definitely yeah. not factory. Yeah, stupidly, it's the spot I've spent the most money. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much. Um, most obvious bit, we've got a front mount intercooler. Um, yeah. So we've swapped from the top mount to the front mount. Uh, so this is a Psycho kit, all hard aluminium piping. Uh, I think it's a 600 by 300 um, core at the front. Uh, which is really good for cooling. Um, I tend to get uh, the intake temps pretty much the exact same as the ambient temperature. So if it's 17 degrees outside, the intake temp is always around 17 degrees. Yeah. Um, so that works really well. Um, the turbo is a stage three G turbo. Yep. Um, it's a VNT, not a gated. Um, so same as a factory, it uses a factory 
the uh, yeah the factory actuator. Um, it's running about 26 uh, psi on its peak, um, and then it's got 30 plus injector caps um, to to keep it fueled up. Um, and then there, yeah, that's just running through the standard airbox. I got no idea what half this stuff is you're talking about, but <laughs> yeah, I get, I, get, so, um, I get the general idea. Yeah, so power-wise, it's running <coughs> about 160 kilowatts at the wheels on 33s, and that's uh, through the manual. Yeah. Um, because you get get a bit more loss for an auto, um, which is about the limit for what the diff and the gearbox can handle. Yeah. Um, so for comparison, on its first tune uh, with the standard uh, turbo and intercooler it made 109 kilowatts at the wheels on the same tyres. Um, and now with all these mods, it makes 160. So yeah, it was 109 when it was tuned um, just from the factory ECU or the, the factory setup tune. And then with all these mods, it's now at 160. Um, and yeah, it's still running fairly reliable boost. They run about 16 stock and this is running about 25. Um, but yeah, the one KDs can handle up to 40 plus fairly well before you start having issues. There is piston issues with them, which is like a little bit undisclosed, but um, it's it's a lot to do with your injectors, but there is there is options to strengthen the piston. So probably future plans is once it gets around the 300,000 k mark, I'll pull it out, probably forge it, and then once I've got uh, a better diff and gearbox set up, probably run a bit more in it because uh, I do like the power. But so yeah, so that's all your inner cooler and the turbo and everything yep. else. So it was a top mount inner cooler. Yep, yeah, it was a top got, mount. Now got yeah, the front one, a, a front mount piping through. So I did I fitted the turbo myself, fitted the inner cooler, and then it's uh, been tuned. Um, and the injectors fitted by TuneWorks in Newcastle. Because you've done a lot of the stuff for this car yourself, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I, I fitted all the, the turbo and the intercooler myself, got it all set up and then trailered it to them, got it tuned. Yep. Um, so on this side, we got just a um, ProVent catch can. Yep, I um, saw the tap for that down under your yeah, yeah. So there's tire a, there. There's a tap for the oil down in the wheel guard. Yep. And uh, I've got it vented to atmosphere rather than back into the intake because there's not much point putting hot air back in the intake. It doesn't really make sense. Yep. Um, so that's what that is. Um, I've got a secondary fuel filter over there. Is that um, pre or post main one? It's a pre yep. pre filter, yep. um, and it does. Uh, it's got like a little water bowl at the bottom, so basically, if you get any water in it, you yeah, can you see can it in see the bottom. It's got yeah. a little drain there, so I've ha I have drained that a few times. Um, so yeah, it, it's really clear. You can see it at the bottom, yep. and yeah, you just undo the, the cap. And I've never ever had uh, factory fuel filter issues. So you know, you got the light on the dash that tells you if there's something wrong with it, or you get water in it, yep. it'll come up on the factory one. Um, I got that pretty much as soon as I got the car just because I got brand new injectors in it when I got it And I wanted to keep them safe because obviously dirty fuel is gonna gonna um, Not do well for your injectors um, So I got those at the same time um, just to keep them protected and I've never had any warning lights or anything come up with the factory Setup so it, it does its job well. They're sort of the two big ones for the engine you feel filter and catch can They're sort of yeah, the two things yep. you want to get on straight also, away. When I did the the intercooler I took the whole intake pipe off all the way to the valves and cleaned out all the gunk. Yeah, and it had two hundred and twenty thousand K's on it when I did that and it was really really chocked up and and this this is before I got a tune I cleaned that out took it for a drive and it was a totally different car so just, those pipes were pretty clogged in like restricted uh, so the, the EGR valve is actually up here so yeah. from that point uh, if you took that pipe off there, you couldn't see anything, for, but pretty much from that point down, all the way to the valves was clogged. So yep. I cleaned it from there all the way down. Um, and yeah, it's also had the EGR turned off uh, through the tune. Uh, the cooler and everything's there. It's uh, just been, the valves been shut off, so. Yeah, okay, cool. And anything else? Um, that's pretty much it under here. The main few things, yeah. in a cooler turbo. If anyone's running about like the temperatures that it runs at, so it usually gets, um, uh, so the, the thermostats are like 83 degrees on these, so it usually sits on like 86 to 88 on the highway uh, water temp, which I see through the scan gauge. Yeah. Um, the most I've ever got the water temp up to was 95. I was on the beach, like two-wheel drive, third gear, really <laughs> having a good go. Yeah. Uh, and the hottest EGTs I ever let it get up to is about 500. That's in a dump, not the manifold. Um, yeah, about 500 is right back off. It sits about 350 on the highway, 400 and to 450 up hills on the highway, yeah. uh, 110. And then on the beach, the most I've ever got it to is 500. And then they're pretty, they're pretty safe until you get to like six to 700 mark. That's when you start doing damage if you hold it there too long. So yeah. I like to, to yeah, back off at about 500 and keep it at that. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. All right. That's about all the mods have run through. You've done a fair few different things to it. Now, how long have you, actually, how long have you had this car? So I got it in late 2018, completely stock, still had the factory bumper on it, absolutely no mods, <laughs> and yeah, it was pretty clean at the time. So what's that, 18 months or something you've done then? Uh, Something like that, yeah. yeah. It, it'll be two years in December this year. Yeah, you've yeah. definitely done a fair bit to it. So yeah. on that, what do you have any future mods you want to do to it? Anything coming up? Yeah, so it's sort of at a crossroads where I like doing hard tracks, but IFS doesn't like doing hard tracks in a yeah. lot of cases. 
it, yeah. you can do it but it's not as reliable yeah. um, and also with the power that I'm running I'm sort of running wanting to run a bit more than what it's what it's at now and the diffs are not going to handle it the gearbox is not going to handle it so it's at a bit of a crossroads where do I sell and go for like maybe a GU or 80 series or something like that or do I keep with this so I actually purchased a GU front and rear diff yesterday yeah. um, so it's sort of a long term project I'm thinking about sussing it on a GU diffs which is obviously cutting all the IFS out of the front welding the, the mount in for the GU diff, putting a steering box on the side, and obviously having a solid axle on the front. Uh, it'll probably be on like 12 inch coilovers, and then I'll probably keep the rear leaf for the moment, uh, yeah. if I end up doing it, and then maybe a fall link or something in the future, but that's uh, probably where this build's gonna head. Um, and you do, would you go 35s of that? Yeah, definitely go 35s. 35s. Get it fully engineered, get a proper sway bar set up in it, and yeah. just um, once I did that, then I'll just leave it, leave the whole suspension set up how it is, because that's pretty much as good as you can get. Um, so yeah, I'm at the point where I'm sort of looking into that. It's probably going to be like a year from now sort of project, but I'm just starting to collect parts now and, and really thinking into it and seeing what it's going to what it's going to add up to and uh, yeah, sort of. Because it's a big it it's a big project. Sure is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But for me to sell this and and build maybe like something that's already got a solid axle is also going to be a big project because yeah. of the amount of money that I put into this. So at this point, it's sort of one of those things where I'm just going to keep going with it, I suppose, if, yeah. if I do end up doing that. So. Which will basically make it a lot more capable and tougher off-road doing that. Yeah, it, yeah. it'll be bigger a lot, tires, wide, lot bigger wider. More you can't really, you can fit 35s on it. I've seen people with 37s on these, but <laughs> it's just not reliable for the yeah. front end. Like, you just end up smashing CVs and tie rods all the time. You'd lose power uh, and stuff too. Yeah, you wouldn't be able yeah. to turn the power up enough. Yeah. And the other issue is you've got to change the diff ratios, obviously. So if you go four ones in these, the four one diffs are obviously a lot weaker because of the small teeth on them. Yeah. Um, so then you start having a lot of diff issues, so you can't run much power. So the end solution will be G diff in the rear, as strong as you can get, which is um, the ones I've got are a factory four one, which will suit this car well on the 35s. So it'll still cruise nice on the highway and it'll end up getting an LN 106 transfer case in it which is gear driven and um, then I can put uh, reduction gears in it and um, get that really nice crawl speed so that's uh, sort of where this is uh, heading the, in the future. That's the long term plan. Yeah very very long term <laughs> yeah. and then more power. Now next question what are, what do you reckon the top few mods are you've done to this car? So I cap it at three. Oh yeah three I guess. Go so three. top three mods number one locker 100% yeah. so off-road ability like just it smokes anything it, like there's no other mod you can do that is better than a locker i've opted for not going for a front locker for the moment because of this idea of the sas yeah, if i end up okay. bailing on that the front locker will definitely be going in but is just that to, why you went a rear locker because you're thinking about doing the front kind of thing uh yeah that and i just like the idea of a rear locker more yeah uh, a lot of people suggest that maybe the front's better in the ifs and maybe that is the case but i i just prefer the rear and it's definitely that'd be the top one mod on this uh for off-road ability Probably number two is the gauges uh, as a whole. So the scan gauge, the EGT and the boost because it just lets you know what's going on. So you see a lot of cars or all factory cars, you're driving around but you really got no idea what's going on. Like you, yeah. Especially if you've got some like engine mods and stuff and you like a bit more weight on it and you've changed it from factory, bigger tires, stuff like that. You can be flying up a hill doing 110 and it all feels good. Your factory gauge is showing that it's fine but you really got no idea. Your EGTs could be up 700. Yeah. Um, so definitely the gauge set up on it, just being able to watch and really know what's going on. Also being able to, if you get an engine light or something goes wrong, you actually know what's going on. Like it's not something really serious or if it is really serious, you can stop. So yeah. definitely the scan gauge and the two gauges. Third, uh, I'd go for the tray and canopy, the, just the whole back setup as a whole. Yeah. Um, so I originally obviously started with a tub and that's the way I was gonna leave it uh, at the start. I was gonna maybe put a draw set in there and just keep it fairly light. Um, but then I started looking into train canopy setups and just all the options that you can do with them and all the advantages over disadvantages sort of just started adding up yeah. and that's what I ended up doing. So just for convenience, being able to pop over the sides and you like you got all your canopy space right there. Yeah. Having the flat tray as well is really handy. Like obviously went and picked up the GU diff so you can just go straight on the top and strap them down. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just the ease of camping with, with the canopy has been really good, just being able to pop it open. And also the other thing I like about it is being able to take the canopy off fairly easy. So it's just four bolts and then you removed all your weight. So yeah. rather than having a fixed yeah. draw set up in yeah. the tub, like I like to change what's going on with this car a bit. So yeah. a lot of the time I've got the tent off, I've got the canopy off if I'm going to the beach, stuff like that. So being able to remove all that weight just is, is a massive advantage for me. That's why I never wanted to put a big setup in the tub because then obviously you've got all that weight all the time there. It's very hard to remove it. Yeah. Um, whereas this, I can just fork the canopy off and I've just removed 
um, a couple hundred kilos and makes a lot more fun. So makes the um, car very interchangeable depending on what you want to do with it. Yeah, for yeah, touring, yeah, camping, yeah. or so, yeah, day down the beach. The whole tray package as a whole with the canopy and the, the canopy fit out is probably my third yeah. uh, best mod on this. Next question would be any mods that you've done that you'd maybe recommend for people not to do yeah. and anything that you've broken on this car. Yeah, so for the first one, probably all the engine mods now. <laughs> like, I really went ham on it because it was at a time where like, I just sort of kept compounding on one another. So like I got a tune first, I'm like, oh, that's pretty sweet. It wasn't enough. And then I wanted more and more and it just started building up yeah. so much. And if I hadn't have spent all that money on it, it would have been a much better off-road car from the start. So obviously I spent all that money on turbo and intercool and all that stuff when I should be spending on it locker compressor and stuff i never had a compressor in this thing until like three months ago so yeah. i drove it for like a year and a half and always having to go to servo never had a locker so i probably regret doing all the engine mods straight up i should have gone for what well, just depends what you want to do with it really but yeah. for me i should have spent that money on on lockers and on the compressor and and off-road mods rather than doing all the engine mods i really do like the engine mods it's good fun but i just regret doing it so early i should have spent it more on the on the off-road side of it so you're happy you're happy you have them just maybe yeah. change the order you did them get, yeah, the, yeah, get the more yeah. important stuff done first yeah i definitely would have i would have left <clears throat> until later if i had it again yeah uh, and anything i'm broken um actually nothing yet haven't so, done like diff cv steering no, arms. so i always keep um two cv i always keep usually one cv and two spare tie rods on like bigger trips yeah uh, so we went up to coughs so i had a one spare cv two spare tie rods because the tie rods is usually one of the first things to go like yeah. with this with the diff drop the cv sit fairly flat so it's not too much pressure on them and it, it's a lot on how you drive so like if you're going up rock steps and stuff with ifs and you start bouncing that's when you back off straight away because yeah. you shock load everything and it's just really not good for it yeah um, whereas tie rods are a little bit easier to do like you can just hit the tire on a wrong angle on a rock and bang one go so uh, I haven't done any yet I'm fairly easy on it in the front end I usually try and rely on first gear low and just use a locker to try and crawl stuff and if I get any bounce I'll just stop straight away yep. so I haven't actually broken anything the only thing I've done is I didn't have a diff breather on it um, to, for like the first year and I kept getting water in the diff yeah, and not doing anything about it and the electric actuator that does the diff flogged out so basically I would like a few times I went to McBride Beach went to put it in four drive and nothing was happening yeah and yeah so basically that's the only thing I've done on it I just um, I replaced that yeah and that's all I've broken on it so far all right cool well I think that's about just about everything isn't it about a cover is it yeah, yeah. we're going to uh, we're out possum brush state forest so we're gonna go for a four-wheel drive now and have some fun and take on some tracks and see how this thing will go to get some footage for this video that's the bit I'm keen for yeah all right let's go